My name is Mary Olson. I work with Nuclear Information and Resource Service. We are a grassroots clearinghouse on nuclear energy, the radioactive waste it produces, and my focus today is on ionizing radiation. In 2011, I published a paper called Atomic Radiation is More Harmful to Women. And the fact is, it's more harmful to women, it's also even more harmful to girls. I'm about to share a clip of a video from a presentation I gave in Vienna, Austria in December of 2014 at the conference called the Vienna Conference on Humanitarian Impacts of Nuclear Weapons. Um, this clip is going to explain what I would spend too many words saying, so I ask you to watch and to be in touch with me if you have any questions. My contact information is on the clip. Thank you, and thank you for being together there in Paris. I wish I could join you. Radiation is invisible, but we see the damage it has done to these chromosomes. Some traditional communities in Australia say the same thing by these words. Radiation breaks the stories our bodies hold that keep us healthy. Damaged stor stories can be passed on to our children. Radiation impacts our cells when reproductive cells are harmed deformations are one outcome. This happens to all babies, plants, animals, humans. We also suffer loss of fertility, spontaneous abortion and miscarriage, heritable mutations, and avoidance of reproduction due to uncertainty. Cancer is the most studied consequence of non-lethal exposures of radiation. When genetic material is damaged, sometimes our bodies can repair that damage. Other times, the damage sits and waits for years or even decades before we become sick. In general, more radiation equals more cancer risk. However, even an exposure so small it cannot be measured may result in death. Children's bodies are small, so the same amount of radiation delivers a larger dose. And since their cells are dividing, they're more vulnerable. This is a very famous report published in 2006, The Biological Effects of Ionizing Radiation. It has the data that I am going to use for the uh, subsequent findings. The report is primarily from the survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The survivors were grouped by the age they were at the time of the bomb. These groups were trapped over their lifetimes. Cancers and cancer deaths were counted. There are many problems with this data, but broadly we can say that the people who were five years or younger in 1945 had the most cancer at some point in their lives. In this group, girls were twice as likely, girls were twice as likely to get cancer as were boys. So for every boy who got cancer, a girl got cancer at some point in their lives. The Beer 7 report is where these numbers are found, but the report does not discuss gender as a risk factor. I published my findings in 2011 and was preceded in 2006 by an independent study by Dr. Arjun Makajani, which we'll hear more about later. Here is the same information in graphical form. Pink is female, blue is male. It is very easy to see the gender difference and that it is greatest in young children. This entire graph is essentially a snapshot of the human family cancer response to radiation. And I need to say that we believe this would apply to any cancer exposed population, including places we hear about, Marshall Islands, St. George, Utah, Semit Palatinsk, excuse me, I mispronounced that, all the test areas, and places like Fukushima. So little girls are not a subpopulation. We are an inextricable part of the human life cycle. And gender was also a factor for cancer among those who were adults at the time of the bombing. Over their lifetime, women exposed as adults suffered 50% more cancer than did men in the same group. 
For every two men in those groups who died of cancer, three women died of cancer. And we skip and skip. Yes, thank you. This is a picture of health. These women recently stopped a nuclear waste dump from coming to their traditional lands. Radiation prevention is more than avoiding harm. It is a source of health and empowerment. And we know these words, but today in Vienna, I want to say them in a new way. Prevention is the cure. One more. This in our hands. Thank you so much for everybody who is working to bring this process forward.